That should have gotten you most of the way through the point moving randomly around the screen. Now I didn't adjust the Y coordinates of the point at all. You do need to do that. And that is part of the lab that you have to do. I am gonna look at chase mode now. So I just added an if else and if chase mode and up here, chase mode's true. If chase mode, we're gonna move very differently than we moved here and we're not gonna label the coordinates of the point. Um, although I guess you could if you wanted to. Uh, but in chase mode, I'm gonna need a target to chase. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we need a second point. So really similar to what we did here, control shift down duplicates. We got a target point now. Now, if you leave it like this, target won't get initialized and dot will get initialized and then it will get initialized again. We don't want that. We want target to be initialized. Uh, we need to move the target to a random location. Okay. Let me do something a little weird. I'm gonna, I want the dot to be to the left of the target. You will delete this later. I'll just set it to five. I want to be on the left side of the screen. Uh, I'm also going to make, I want the target to be on the right side of the screen. So I realize I'm not really using the random values here very much. Um, you're going to delete these later when this actually works, the five and 500, but I just want the dot to appear on the left of the target. All right, now we're going to, if we're in chase mode, we're gonna chase the point. Now you saw the code of how to label it. Uh, so I'm not gonna cover the uh, labeling the point. So that's already in the uh, previous video. What we are gonna look at is actually how do you make the dot chase the target? So here's chase point. It's gonna be kind of similar to move point, except you are going to, you don't need to worry about leaving the screen as long as your target point is on the screen, we're gonna make sure that the XY coordinates of P become closer to the XY coordinates of target point. So we're gonna check if P dot X less than target point dot X. All right, so what does this mean? If the point coordinate is too small, we want to make the point coordinate, the X coordinate bigger. So dx is gonna equal speed, which is positive. And so when we add px uh, equals px plus dx. All right, so if our x coordinate's too small, the dx is gonna be positive and we're gonna add that positive value to the point x coordinate. So that should move it to the right. Notice I didn't draw the target on the screen. You do need to do that. I don't have the code for draw target done right here. I don't have that code written. You do need to write that and it's gonna be a bunch of concentric red circles. Here's the red I use. I find if I do color dot red, what it actually does is 255 red, zero of the other colors. To me, that hurts my eyes a little bit. I think it's ugly. So when I make a red, I usually do a little bit less than 255 and I never use zero zero because that's like a shocking red to your eyes. So I usually mellow it out with a value around 50. Okay but we're just gonna draw the target as a, just a standard point on the screen for now. And we go over, oh, we went right past it. What happened? If it's less, dx equals speed. Now, what happens if px is equal or bigger than the x coordinate? We don't do anything, so dx is gonna be the same value it had before, which it had the value of speed before. So we're gonna do here something real similar So if our X coordinate's too big, we're going to set the X speed to be negative 
of what speed is. And this should go past it and then what's happening here it's oscillating back and forth it's adding speed subtracting speed adding so speed the dx is positive negative positive negative and so our x coordinate is just going back and forth just the two pixels to the left two to the right two to the left two to the right and it's going crazy i do want you to fix that but i'm not going to show you how to fix it but at least now your x coordinate should either get bigger or smaller depending on if it's on the left or the right Now that it's working, I'm going to not fix the x coordinates and I'll just let them go random. And so we should see, yep, the point chasing the other point, chasing the target. All right, what I haven't done, when the point catches the target, the target's supposed to move to a new random location. You need to figure out when that happens and go ahead and move it. You do have a nice distance method right here. You can use this distance method to determine when you should move the target. And that should get you most of the way through the lab and I may make some extra videos later uh, for additional help topics.